XML. This stands for Extensible Markup Language. Why do they not call it EML? Was it due to spelling difficulties or some other reason? I do not care. Nevertheless, XML is a useful way to store data that both people and machines can understand. Today, we will harness the power of Python to import, create, query, and store data using XML. And by the end of this video, you will have finished watching it. Begin by visiting the online documentation for Python at docs.python.org. Then select the Global Module Index. There are a lot of letters at the top, but one is missing. YAML must feel neglected. Click on X to see the available XML modules. Using your mouse skills, expand the XML module. You can see that Python has modules for DOM and SAX. We will politely ignore all of these and focus on the Element Tree module. This is where the action is at, so let us cut to the action. First, open a shell and import the Element Tree module. Typing module names with more than 10 letters is a waste of milliseconds, so I will use an alias, ET. If you call the DIR function on the ET module, you are blasted with a list of classes, functions, and special methods. This is an overwhelming screen of text. There has to be a better way to inspect the contents of a module. And there is. Python's Inspect module is built for inspecting Python code. Let us exit the terminal and switch to a Python file. We begin by once more importing the element tree module. We will use three items from the inspect module, get members, is class, and is function. First, we will display the classes in the ET module. To do this, we loop over all members in the ET module that are classes, whose class name does not start with an underscore, and then print the class name. Now run. The two classes we will focus on today are the element and element tree classes. The class names element and element tree perfectly describe the structure of XML data. XML is a tree of elements. A tree is a data structure where each node, other than the root, has a single parent, and each node can have zero or more children. And an XML document is a tree where each node is an element. An element is simply a pair of tags, the start tag and end tag. You are permitted to name the tags anything you like, but the end tag requires a stylish slash. An element can contain attributes inside the start tag. Attributes are simply key value pairs of data. Elements can also contain text between the tags, and even other elements. We return now to our inspection code. Now we look at the functions in the module to see if any are worth our consideration. To see the functions, we only need to make two modifications. Update the comment, and only get the members for which is function is true. You may be thinking, why update the comment? It is only a comment. No one will ever know. Trust me, the butterfly effect is a powerful thing. One trivial mistake can accidentally find its way into GitHub and jeopardize our entire timeline. But I digress. Run. The three functions we will be using today are from string, its inverse to string, and parse. From string takes XML data in the form of a string and returns an element object. Parse will open an XML file and return it as an element tree. To string is the inverse of the from string function. Scan your eyes over these three functions and be careful to observe the differences. The to string and from string functions convert between strings and elements, but the parse function gives you an element tree object. As an example, we have created a new cryptocurrency called MONEY. The name is written in all caps and requires three exclamation points. What distinguishes MONEY from other cryptocurrencies is enthusiasm. We have created a file called hodlers.xml with the first group of people who bought MONEY. Who needs blockchain when you can save data in a simple unencrypted XML file? Let us move this file off to the side and begin coding. 
we begin by importing the element tree module. Next, open the file using the parse function. Recall that the parse function returns an element tree object. To get the root element of this tree, call the getRoot method. As a first test, we will print out this element as a string. Now is a good time to ask yourself, self, what do I expect to see when this code is run? Let us see if you are correct. Run. There are several things to observe. First, the result is a byte string. That is what the leading B indicates. Second, this element is more than just the crypto tag. It includes all child elements in addition to white space. Let us instead look at the attribute. To get the value of an attribute, call the get method on the element. The crypto element has a single attribute, coin. Now that we have the name, let's check that everything is correct. And it is. The get method returns an attribute value. To create an attribute, you use, please do not be shocked, the set method. I will demonstrate by adding a launched attribute to the root element. An easy way to see all of the attributes for an element is the attrib property. This returns all the attributes as a dictionary, run, and done. To commit this change to memory, you save the updated XML by calling the write method on the element tree object. The XML file has updated, and the launch date attribute is there. For my next trick, I will add an ID attribute to each investor element. I will opt for clarity over elegance in this code. The initial ID will be 1. To retrieve all investor elements, you have several options. You can call the findAll method on either an element or the element tree. It is your choice, but choose wisely. You can also choose recklessly, if you so choose. I am not the boss of you. Here, I will find all investor nodes in the XML tree by calling the findAll method on the tree object. For each element, I will set an ID attribute. ID is an integer, but the attribute value should be a string. We then increment the ID and then save the results. Run. The XML has been updated. If you have regrets, you can delete attributes much like you would delete an entry in a dictionary. We loop over each investor node and then delete the ID entry in the attribute dictionary. There. The IDs are now gone with the wind. Message incoming. I just learned that money has two new investors. We will add them to the XML document using two different methods. One way is to use the from string method to create the investor explicitly. Next, append this element to the root node and save. Run. The reason for the unexpected formatting is that we did not specify white space. Python inserted the new element before the closing crypto tag. But with a little keyboard magic, we can make the XML file presentable once more. Another way to create the new element is by calling the element constructor. Simply pass in the name of the tag, and you have a new element object. You can now set the text value of this investor, and append it to the root. Run, and done. The element tree and element classes also support selecting nodes by path. To demonstrate this, let us once more add an ID attribute to the investor elements. This time, we will simply iterate over an enumeration of the investor elements. One example is to select the first investor element with an ID of 4. As proof of success, we will print the name. Run. If you want to find more than one element, use find all. The element tree module does not support all XPath expressions. That is because the purpose is to provide a Pythonic way to work with XML. But it does support enough to make you a happy and content human programmer. The element tree module in Python is a clean and straightforward tool for working with XML data. The XPath support is sufficient for most use cases, and the module even supports namespaces. 
So who needs Dom or Sax when you have E.T.? E.T. phone home? No. E.T. parts data.